I'm Dan Hunt, and this is Up Close and Personal. We are live at the Aria Hotel, Casino Resort, and Spa in Las <laughs> Vegas, Nevada, at World CryptoCon. I'm with John Belazir. Belazir. I was yeah, going to say Belazar, so <laughs> Belazir. Belazir, yeah. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you. you so much Thanks, for Dan. being here. Thanks. You know, Thanks before so we get started, me. let's talk about this event. What an incredible event. It's amazing, actually. It's, uh, it's bringing together a host of different projects from all over the world yes. uh, related to the blockchain. Great group of people, great folks from the beginning of crypto to new newbies like myself. <laughs> Just really uh, well done, too. Excellent, you, you, you excellent know, the, execution. The yeah. organization and the execution have been, 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 been incredible. Great, yeah. Absolutely. Well, John, as you know, up close and personal, we're going to talk about your company. Yeah. But I don't want to talk about it right now. All right. What I want to talk about, and what I'm really interested in, is how did John get from growing up in Brooklyn, Brooklyn yeah. okay, but really being born in Haiti, right? Yeah, yeah Bahamas, so, yeah. In the Bahamas, mm -hmm. and your family's from Haiti, though. Yes, okay. yes. Moving to Brooklyn, yeah. to being the CEO of not one, not two, <laughs> but now your third company. Right. Okay, so you, you were born in the Bahamas. Yes. Your parents immigrated into Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was that like as a kid? Do you remember being any place but in Brooklyn? I have some faint memories from from the Bahamas. My my dad used to take me to the to the to the water uh, where the boats were and, every, and everything. My uh, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. My 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 birth name is actually Johnny. E. So Johnny. My e. name is Johnny Belazier, and apparently it was named after a boat that <laughs> was down there. I don't know. That's what my mom says. So, <laughs> you know that little secret. We we, we get about a hundred thousand viewers on each one of our shows. So, just a little secret that yeah, we got yeah. out of the box. Just today. between me and you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just between me and you. So, uh, so my close friends still call me Johnny because I, I I went by Johnny in, in, in college. Okay. Um, but I but uh, yes, I do remember Brooklyn, and it was uh, New York was very different back then. Uh, growing up in Brooklyn was rough and tough, uh, and I think it, it, it built a lot of grit in me. So I think um, uh, being there and being an immigrant in, in a city like New York right. uh, is, is, a, is an interesting and important foundation for a young, young, uh, young person to have. So let's talk about foundation. Yeah. Um, my wife is a 20-year science teacher, and wow. I know she played an integral role in a lot of her students' lives. Yeah. Um, was there a teacher that stands out to you that really played an integral role in your life as you were, you know, a young kid growing up in high school? Yes. Uh, so I went to George Westinghouse High School. It was a vocational technical high school. I would uh, credit George Westinghouse for really getting me into the computing space that I've been in my entire career. And uh, there are a number of teachers there that I will, I, I, I can go through a long list. Um, but there's one in particular, uh, Mr. Tannenbaum. He ran the information technology and computing class at, at uh, Westinghouse. And one day, you know, I, I, I loved the class. I mean, it was, it was it, it, you know, I, I couldn't get enough of it. And he noticed that. Uh, he, pulls me, he pulls me to the side and says, John, you know, you, you, you seem to have a, a knack for this thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, yeah, I really like it. And he just, from there, just mentored me through understanding and seeing all the opportunities related to technology. And I think that really set the foundation for, for who I would become. What impresses me so much about him was the fact that he was legally blind. So the fact that he saw the world effectively through a, a straw and noticed me out of uh, you know, a host of different students and my potential was, was uh, still to this day, it's just amazing that uh, I had the opportunity to be noticed by an incredible person like that. So one of the threads that I'm noticing here at World CryptoCon as I interview different company owners and CEOs right. is um, all you guys seem to be overachievers. <laughs> um, yeah. You, you know, I was talking earlier <laughs> and I found that you started your first business in that class. Yeah, I was a, I, I was a bit of an entrepreneur, yeah, from the very beginning. Tell, tell me about um, that very first business. <laughs> so, uh, so, that, so in, in that computing class I was talking about, um, you know, th this was uh, still the days where you had mainframes and in the class you were doing your work on these terminals 
And so when you would write your programs, you had to store the programs on something, and so they, they gave you these floppy disks that you had to put in the machines. Remember those? Like okay, some people. So, so for the millennials <laughs> out there, yeah, you like, take a, a step disc? back, and what's a floppy disk? Yeah. It used to be, it, it was a five and a quarter by five and a yep. quarter little disk, and yep. it looked almost like a CD, but it was right. in paper. Exactly. And really, really it would flexible. actually have a slot yep. that you would go in, and they were 512 megabytes was yeah. the biggest one you could That's get. That's the biggest you can get. They, they were like had, as they big, had 64s, yeah. 256, and 512s, exactly. but the That's biggest right. one you could get exactly. was 512. And that's, what'd you do with these things? <laughs> so, so you would, you would uh, take the disk and you would uh, load it in and, and, and store your programs there. But over time, as a class developed, there, you, you would need more of these disks because you have a lot of programs you run out of space. And so what uh, Tannenbaum says, you got to go get Buy you know buy one of these things, um, or we can sell them to you here for two bucks, and is a way to sort of finance the class, if you will. Right. Um, so I looked at the the back of the, the disc and found out who the manufacturer of it was, and I uh, I called them, had them send me their catalog, <laughs> and in the in the catalog they had a host of different versions. One of those was a multicolored set. So you can right. get red, yellow, green. And, uh, and I decided to get into the business of basically distributing these discs to the students. And I charged four bucks because it was like, it, it, it was colored. <laughs> yeah, they were cooler. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a very successful business. I actually stayed, uh, saved enough money to buy like my first computer and I had a machine at home and uh, I, bought, I bought a Tandy 1000, which was my personal computer. I want you to think back to high school and those days back then. Yeah. And what did you want to be when you grew up? What were your dreams as a kid before you entered into the world? Um, I, I think that I uh, really wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, one of my uh, after school jobs was working for a typewriter repair company. Okay. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was in Park Place and um, what I would have to do, my job was to take the repaired machines and take them into the offices that had sent them out to get, to get. Right. And I was in Manhattan, I, you know, I grew up in Brooklyn, I go to Manhattan, there's like these in, incredible skyscrapers, and I'd have to go into uh, the building to deliver this typewriter, and the first, one of the first times I had to do that, the guy says, you don't come in this way, you go in that way. You know, you to go through like the, the back freight elevator. But when I would arrive at these floors, um, I was just amazed. Like this is this is like what drives the world. This is this is business. This is business. This exactly. Is it. This is it. This is it. And I told myself uh, that first of all, uh, in the future, I'm going to go through that door, and I want to be the guy who's running one of these things. And I just decided at that point that I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be in business. Um, and so that that's what drove that whole. And to achieve interest. that goal, you just didn't go to college. Okay. <laughs> No, well, overachievers don't just go to college. <laughs> you went to Cornell. I did, yes. yes. You went to Cornell, not just for your undergrad, but your graduate degree as well. Yep, I did, uh, I did an undergrad in computer science and a graduate in uh, Master of Engineering uh, at Cornell. Uh, I spent six years at uh, Cornell in sub-zero <laughs> temperatures. It's cold there. It's very cold there. Uh, but it was one of the best times of my life, and I, I would do it again. It was, it was an amazing place. Well, you know, something else happened in your life at Cornell that, you know, well, we're I talking have... about, John, so we, we really got to talk about it here. Okay. You met your wife. I did. I met my, my wife, who I love very much. Um, so I was a senior at the time, and um, another secret, uh, in addition to my... Just, just between <laughs> the 100,000 of us right now, okay? Just a little secret. Go ahead. Uh, you know, in addition to my, you know, entrepreneurial focus, I... Uh, really had a passion for dancing in college, and I co-founded a Latin ballroom group called uh, Sabo Latino, which is still there actually, 25 years later, they're, they're still at the school. And we would basically do uh, Latin ballroom, uh, tango, merengue, salsa, and uh, we were growing the group because people wanted to see our shows and we wanted to have a, a larger team to take elsewhere. So we, we, we held these auditions and uh, uh, my wife was one of the uh, <laughs> women who auditioned. She came in and we didn't have enough guys to dance with all the women who came in, into, the, into the room. So she was dancing with this other woman and I, 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 uh, I, I elbowed the, the other, my other co-founder says, well, we gotta break that up. And I, you know, he, took, <laughs> he took one girl and I took my wife and uh, we actually became friends first uh, over about eight years. And then we eventually um, 
uh, fell in love and uh, we've been together for uh, almost 16 years now. So from a, from a TV show host point of view, you auditioned your wife to be your wife. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's, that's one way to put it. But I knew instantly when I saw her, like, there's something about that woman. So, and, uh, so. you know, again, an incredible story. But, you know, your story gets even more incredible because you were handpicked, you were plucked into a program out of Cornell from Intel. Yes, yes. Tell me about that program and how that worked. Uh, so Intel is an amazing company. Um, it, it was uh, run by Andy Grove, who I think is one of the best leaders I've ever had the opportunity to engage with. And when I was at Cornell, uh, Andy started the program to go out to all the universities uh, in the United States and find you know, the best students, the, the, the students with the most potential. And he created uh, this thing called the Intel Scholars Program. And right. essentially they would go into the school, identify these high potential kids, uh, help them with their education, connect them with different mentors and resources. We'd get summer jobs uh, at Intel and uh, basically put them on a career growth path and then hopefully uh, there would be enough passion around Intel that they would come work for the company. That they'd come work there. <laughs> yeah. And you did and that's, that's for that's quite exactly a while. That's exactly what I did, yes. That's exactly did what that. you did. Yeah. You did that for quite a while. Yep. But at some point, that little kid that wanted to be an entrepreneur <laughs> stepped out and said, you know what, I want to do this for myself. Yes. I want to have my own business. Yeah. So again, an overachiever, <laughs> you, you didn't just way. go out and do one or two. This is your third business that you're on right now. Yes, third okay. company, yeah. So, Saluna. Yes. Let's talk about Saluna. We'll talk about your other companies in a minute, right. but let's talk about Saluna. What do you do at Saluna? So I am the CEO of Saluna, okay. and I lead a team that is working on an amazing uh, project that combines renewable energy and the blockchain. And okay, so uh, it combines renewable energy and the blockchain. Yes. And uh, what we're doing through that combination is building the next great infrastructure company. We're building a company that's going to power this whole blockchain ecosystem, power literally, by the way, by building one of the largest wind farms in the world and one of the best wind sites in the world in southern Morocco. Uh, we're taking a site that's twice the size of, of uh, Manhattan uh, that had winds that are three times the speeds that you would see in New York. Okay. Uh, and combining that energy resource to develop over 900 megawatts of power, renewable power, and we're going to combine that with a whole computing farm that's going to do uh, blockchain computing uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the blockchain network, cryptocurrency, AI machine learning, and we're also going to use the excess power to power the Moroccan grid. So we've essentially created a business model that combines technology and renewables to create a way to drive more renewables in the rest of the world. We're pretty excited about it. It's, uh, it's completely different from any other business I've ever done, but it is the first business that has the potential to not only change the world, but be a huge company. Okay, so a lot of people in the world, now the, 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 the crypto geeks, they all know about power. Uh -huh. But we're gonna take a step back and just kind of explain power to everybody for a second. Sure. You said that this facility that you are in the process of building yes. is going to be 900 megawatts. <laughs> yes. Okay? Yes. So, in our homes, yes. Okay, we normally have how many watts that come into our homes? About. It's probably. Uh, is it that? They do it different. They they bring it in our homes. They bring in amps, which right, I've right. never understood. Yeah, yeah. This you do amps and watts. And so so yeah. a normal home is a hundred amps. Mm -hmm. That's probably what about ten thousand uh, watts. Ten thousand watts or something like that. So let's let's if just we, say we ten thousand right. watts. Yeah. So a normal home is ten thousand watts. How many watts are in a megawatt? Um, well, there's uh, there's a there's a thousand kilowatts in, in a there's a thousand. Uh, of those watts in a kilowatt, kilowatt, and we're talking about a megawatt, so there's a thousand of those. So a thousand kilowatts, yes. so a thousand thousand yes. is, is a is megawatt. megawatt. Yes. And you're not going to do one or two or three or we're four. We're doing 900,000, yeah. You're gonna, doing and, 900, and, and let's just put this in, in perspective <laughs> for a second. Yeah. We're here in Las Vegas, and yep. the Hoover Dam is right down the street. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is a... 30 I don't know megawatt? how big. I don't I know how it's big. 30 megawatts. 30 megawatts. It's a 30 megawatt. Plant. Okay, so we're doing uh, so 100 times that would be 
uh, 10 times that would be 300. Right. And, and three times that, so 30 times that. So you're going to build a power facility <laughs> yeah. 30 times bigger than the Hoover Dam. Than the Hoover Dam. Yeah. I, 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 I've, I've come up with so many ways to give people perspective on that. That was a good one. <laughs> uh, I've done 900 football fields is, is another one for people yeah. who like sports. Uh, I've done the point that 900 megawatts would basically power most of the, 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 the uh, U.S. Virgin Islands, for example. All of them All combined. Of them. <laughs> yes. Combined. Yeah. Uh, so to give you a sense, it's a tremendous amount of power. Yeah. I'm going to go back to achieving and the thread of the CEOs that I've interviewed this week at World CryptoCon. The thread here always seems to be that of overachieving <laughs> okay. and, and giving back. Right. So talk to me a little bit about your why. Why do you do what you do? What is the driving force behind John? That's a great question. Um, my why is really driven by, I, I, I believe it's driven by adding things that didn't exist before. I, uh, I like creating companies and I, I am excited by creating something from nothing. So I, I, I really focus on uh, when there's a huge technological opportunity to change the world, right. I want to be the guy that creates something from nothing that adds to the momentum of that transformation. And the blockchain has the potential to do just that for the world. Like we, you know, we have the potential to, to raise hundreds of millions of people out of poverty with the blockchain. We have the uh, opportunity to completely change the landscape of renewable energy through the blockchain. We have the opportunity to uh, change the face of financial services for, uh, for forever. And uh, what, why would I want to be part of that? Is because there's an opportunity to create something from nothing that can add to that momentum. And that's, uh, uh, that's what really drives me, that's my passion. Now, I was talking to one of your investors earlier today. You were? I was. <laughs> <laughs> I get around. <laughs> okay. My background is a reporter. Wow, Talking good. to one of your investors, and yeah. he talked to me a little bit about, and one of the questions I asked him was, why? Yeah. Why did you invest in this man's company? I'm about yeah. to interview him, why? Yeah. And, and he said, when you interview him, you'll understand why. <laughs> That's and great. what I see and what I've learned in the 15 minutes we've been together is integrity. I want you to talk a little bit about integrity and how important that is yeah. in today's environment. Oh, it's extremely important. Uh, and I've, I've been big, a big proponent of doing exactly what I say I'm going to do. Uh, in my past businesses, I've uh, there's been cases where I've reached a point where cus my customer and I, let's say, are, are in disagreement about what was agreed to. Right. And they says, well, you said you would do this. And I says, if you say that I said that, this conversation is over. I'm going to do exactly what I said I'm going to do. And that's so important in today's business. It will be a, uh, uh, a, 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 a thing that should be true for the, for the, for the, the rest of hu humanity, I, I believe but you don't see that all the time. Uh, right. Integrity is a missing uh, uh, foundational element in many businesses today. And in our company, it's, it's, it's all about who we are, it's in our DNA, and it's about who I am. I want to do what I say I'm going to do. And we want to we wanna build this, this project because we think it's going to help Morocco, it's going to help the blockchain space, it's going to create a model, and we want to do it because it's true. And we want to do it because that's what we say we're going to do. John, um, an incredible human being. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. I truly Thanks. Thanks appreciate you being here, and I know really you and I are, are going to stay in touch <laughs> forever. Thank forever. you. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is just incredible. Yeah. Uh, John, so thank you so much thank for being so here much. at World CryptoCon in Las Vegas at the beautiful Aria Hotel, Casino Resort, and Spa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget the spa. My wife will never let me forget the spa. <laughs> We're oh at World God. CryptoCon 2018. I'm Dan Hunt saying have a great rest of today and an even better day tomorrow. Thanks.